Hi, welcome to Gate Crashers. Uh, this is a different episode. Uh, I do suggest you watch this one in video, but it is in podcast form as well. Today, we are talking to a lot of different people. That list includes Dan Stevens, who is coming off a year of horror. We've got Thomas Middleditch, Sean Dean Brown, Mary Mack. We've got my buddy Mike McMahon and Josh Bicell. All here once again to talk about Solar Opposites, this time for the Halloween Special 2. A direct sequel to the Halloween special from two years ago, because this team loves to be wild with how they're doing their specials. First up, we'll have all the actors, and then after that, you will get to see the co-creator and executive producer. Uh, I hope you enjoy these interviews. Uh, make sure you go watch now on Hulu. Thank you. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you for having us on. I'm very excited to speak with you, Sean. I think we only spoke like three weeks ago, so I'm excited to chat again. <laughs> Sean really screwed it up the first time, though, didn't he? It, it was a very interesting uh, Just... conversation we had. In furry. It was a, one of the most interesting interviews I've gotten to do. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting you. Are we supposed to not swear on here? I'm sorry. No, you can Dan. say whatever you want. No, no, okay. no. I, I'm from Philly. Every other word is fuck. Okay. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard not to curse. Okay, good. So um, let me just get into character real quick. <clears throat> I know, right? You got really got to pull it in. So we're here to talk about Halloween. You are doing another Halloween special. Got to watch it this morning. Uh, just wonderful. Maybe one of my favorite line deliveries in the entire series from you, Sean. Uh, it's not even like a a big line, but it's just uh, just incredible. I'll tell you after. But when you both were younger, did you trick or treat? Were you big trick or treaters? Oh yeah. What was the what was the candy you were like gunning for? Mine was Starburst, Skittles. And Sour Patch Kids. But then as I got older, a Twix bar was very exciting too. We had Laffy Taffy. And I loved it because of the jokes on there. Anytime I could get a Laffy Taffy, I, I was like, this is a gift that keeps on giving. I I, I loved it. <laughs> I, I think you're the first person I have ever met that's been excited about the Laffy Taffy jokes. So I'm I mean, glad. please. They're giving you a, a little joke. They have took the time to put a little joke on there. You should look into like becoming the person who writes those. That would be a a solid my career. Trust. I need a bigger <laughs> black attack for my job. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But and then the, the child would need therapy after reading the chunk of the wrapper on that chunk. It'd be a probably of a twelve by twelve piece of wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with like an hour of uh, better help. Oh yeah. <laughs> Now, with Halloween specials, they're kind of a big thing in television. Do you have any that stick out for you from, like, ones that you try to watch every year? Sean's got a lot of answers. You know, I'm trying to think, like, because I grew up on, on like, the family sitcom shows, and there was I always enjoyed whatever they would come up with. So, like, Modern Family, The Middle, Malcolm in the Middle, I think had some, too, that so like those and then then there was like a specific Simpsons one because I didn't wasn't aware of that it was a common thing that they have all those. So there was one that I watched that I think had some Edgar Allan Poe in it. But it the, yeah. the Raven one. I can't remember the which which tree house it was, but yes. Yeah. I, I, it was Simpsons, right? Did, Simps well, they've done everything. Like we told somebody else the Simpsons doesn't count because they've done everything. But They've done that Edgar Allan Poe, I think. That's them. Oh gosh, I like the movie. I I like the movie E.T. I know it's not a special from a sitcom, but I like it. I like uh, it's one of the greatest stories in in history, and it's it, they take them trick or treating under the ghost sheet, and that's like such a cool moment. Mary, do you do you consider E.T. a Halloween movie because they go trick or treating? Yes. Huh, I've never thought of that. Well, I just opened your You're world right. to new horizons, Dan. You're really blowing my mind today. <laughs> I wasn't not expecting to 
come away from this with so much insight into the world. <laughs> That's uh, the scariest kind of movie I can watch is E.T. Because what if he doesn't get home? It's terrifying. I was more afraid of how he looked, but sure, yeah, the the <laughs> he's a scary little guy scurrying around, but the so Halloween, you're both very funny people. Now I I debated either asking what your best Halloween costume was or your worst, but I want to give you the option to tell me what is the funniest of any of those. So what has been your funniest Halloween costume? Should I tell should I tell mine, Sean? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I only was I only got to dress up twice for school for Halloween in elementary and my it was I was Pippi Longstocking from the children's books and I made all my own costumes because we lived in the woods. We didn't have stores to go get costumes. And I made the most dangerous Pippi Longstocking <laughs> costume because she had braids like the Wendy's girl from the Wendy's fast food. And um, I made mine with a coat hanger and I cut it with a wire snippers or my dad cut it. And I I made my braids of yarn on it, but the ends were so sharp and the ends of my braids were right at eye level for children. And it, it, it was like, I hurt so many kids like standing in line for lunch and like, oh my God, it was so dangerous that as a comedian now, as an adult, I can't stop laughing about my costume which nobody would be allowed into a school <laughs> with the spears with two spears on the sides of her head so that's my favorite my favorite costume and it's also my worst costume and my favorite costume that's almost like a solar out like like a in solar like her stabbing kids in the hallway or something <laughs> weapon. you guys if you would have held if i would have like held on to a boom box or a radio you would have got such good reception because I, I i'm like you get your human body reception and those hangers. Oh, missed opportunity there. Oh, crazy. My dog's having a fit. Oh, God. I'll be back. We'll be here. Come on. Oh, dang. It's like, it's not like Cujo, but isn't that the scary dog? You got to take care of Dingo because he's having a stomach fit out there. Oh. Gosh. Is Sorry. he okay? No, it's okay. Is he okay? I don't know. He gets into this. He gets these stomach fits. I don't. I'm sorry, Danda. No, no, it's okay. My my dog eats uh, aluminum foil as like a profession. So wow, she's the. She also broke my kneecap this summer. So she's a she's a terror. So what kind of dog is this? A monster. She's like a (laughs) mutt. She's a. She's usually sitting on this couch for everything that I do, but Uh... yeah, it's she's a nightmare. Uh, but I only have two minutes. But Mary, I can I ask, did you always live like out in the woods, like out in the middle of nowhere? I, well, yeah, I grew up in the middle of nowhere and now I'm I'm do, back. Do you <laughs> have do you think you have a different relationship to Halloween and horror because of that? Like is it scarier being that you're just kind of secluded? I don't like that you brought it up because I never really <laughs> thought about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and now I'm like yeah i should lock the doors this is horrible because there's nobody around but but you know one of these days i'll come back out of the woods but for the time being i guess i'd just be sitting here terrified with a bb gun and a slingshot ready to to defend my well you have the big dog with stomach problems so you'll yeah i got a disabled dog who is like high special needs with his tummy but um yeah, I I wasn't scared until now. So thank you, Dan. You're welcome. I, I think that's my job as a journalist to scare people. I don't I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite part of this Halloween special over the other special Halloween holiday specials you've gotten to do? We're allowed to say it, Sean. We can say we we were thinking we'd spoil it. Um, uh, mine is that they bring Thanksgiving up at the end and they duel. They duel with Thanksgiving, and I love it. So good. It's so good. Yeah, I, I thought it was cool that it because it's a sequel that it's like it's even it's more epic than the first with the the whole battle stuff at the end, and then uh, 
and then there's like the emotional acceptance stuff at the like I don't know it's heartfelt but also gross and fun so yeah I, I like to I like I like it all I like the surprises I this might be my favorite special it's so good well thank yeah. you both um I'll I can end the recording Sean the thing that I wanted to mention I te was texting Mike this morning your delivery there was some line that along the lines of I don't want to be rude but what the fuck <laughs> when you're talking I was like I that is the that. Absolute funniest line delivery that I ever. I had to rewind it because I was just laughing so hard because it's like so nonchalant. And I was like, it, it just your voice just worked. I was like, that's incredible. I believe this was Sean's best episode he's ever done, and I rewound some of those lines as well because I was like, dang, he's got it's he's nailing this. It the was so stuff, good. It's so funny. It's so good. You, you should win an Emmy for this episode, Sean. This was so good. But you have to wear the cat costume to the. You do have to wear the cat <laughs> costume. Yeah. I'd like to. You know, like to <laughs> hey, Great, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hello, Dan. Your your name is like. It's like a cool nickname that you would give yourself. Thank you. Thank like, you. but that's your normal name. Yeah, my Who's parents that? said that's that. That's Dan McMahon, man. <laughs> you yeah. know, that kind of thing. And you're like walking around. It's, like, it you know, is, a nice it is good for people to remember. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what? Yeah. I actually just got off a cane after getting surgery. So <laughs> you, got really a, you got the cane. You need a little like a cool jean jacket. You pop up the collar. That's Dan McMahon, baby. Ooh, Dan a jean McMahon. jacket. Like a whole yeah. back patch thing going too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then it. it's got Dan McMahon on the back. So they go, who yeah, is that? And you go. Like 80 style. Damn, we, hey. Yeah. <laughs> like Steve, I'll get my whole face tattooed on my back. Um, yeah, yeah. Thomas, we've gotten to chat a few times before. Uh, Dan, we have never chatted before. And I don't know <laughs> if you don't know anything about me. I'm a pretty hard hitting journalist. So I, yeah. every time I interview people for the first time, I ask them a big question. You made me cry last time. So just. I, I got you admit yeah, you were a furry it. last time, actually. Um, <laughs> what is your wow. favorite sandwich? My favorite sandwich. Yes. Well, good luck. <laughs> I am going to say, okay, this is very specific. But there is a restaurant on the east side of Los Angeles called Kitchen Mouse. that is a vegan restaurant and they do a breakfast sandwich in a croissant. That is, the, it's my favorite a thing. I eat it as many times a week as possible. What what is in a vegan breakfast sandwich versus there's, any? there is a there's there's a vegan patty, there's some sort of vegan egg situation, there's cheese right. in a croissant. Got it. It's it's very very good. So we're here to talk about Halloween though. Yeah, Dan, uh, stay on top, stay on top. Whoa, of whoa, whoa! Of no, that Dan. <laughs> Yes, Dan. Oh, it is confusing that we are both. Me, I've got to stay on topic. Yeah, I'm, dude. I'm He's trying to ask you about this. fucking Halloween. You're talking about vegan croissants. You're Jesus about Christ. Vegan breakfast sandwiches. <laughs> With Halloween, um, I thought it would be easier to ask you, what is your worst or best costume you've ever worn? I wear... Oh. My best is... An I'll tell you why I like it in a second. Why, but what my best was light jeans, black turtleneck, white sneakers, glasses, kind of pale face and vampire fangs, vampire Steve Jobs. Why it ruled is because it was easy and because I was comfortable all night. And at the end, I just, you know, wipe off a little bit of pale makeup, bada bing, bada boom. And it falls in line with what I think Halloween's got to be, which is ghouls, goblins, scaries i mean it wasn't that scary but you know that theme as opposed to i'm dressing sexy. up as mario sexy oh. sexy mario <laughs> sorry yeah sexy slutty mario <laughs> i could do slutty i could do slutty mario I've got you could stash. kill slutty mario daniel right should i do that oh, this year yes so. just suspenders just suspenders and a little and a short skirt <laughs> and it's a me. <laughs> it's a me. It's Mario. Uh, <laughs> um, I, well, one of the best I ever did was, it was similar to Thomas, very simple. 
uh when we were doing beauty and the beast there was a moment where they were maybe going to do like a real you know instead of cgi they were going to do the real sort of thing so i had these fangs made mm-hmm. and they 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 were like bespoke very incredible fangs and i obviously got to keep them because they were not going to fit anybody else and i just happened to have them one halloween i was away somewhere i think it was in vancouver and so sort of, i'll chuck them in the suitcase just in case didn't wear anything remotely halloweeny but had the fangs in and just occasionally could like flash a smile and it really freaked people out because it came out of nowhere and it was very uh disarming and they're very good fangs they look like i was born with them in um <laughs> so that's kind of a sneaky sneaky supple one um the worst i was just saying it was bojack horseman where i i got a rubber horse's head and did the whole thing but then my daughter who was very young at the time freaked out every time i put the horse's head on so i couldn't <laughs> actually wear it and and then i was just a guy in some clothes um yeah i looked like i'd made no effort at all I, that's that's very funny uh it's good to know that dan stevens travels with fangs uh this is actually the first yeah uh, listen i uh, i don't kink shame here thomas <laughs> says, thomas says very well we've had a very long conversation about yeah um some, yeah thing. furries and fangs <laughs> it's, it's, it's a thing here this is actually the first time i'm a I'm I am the solar opposites guy. I've done many interviews with this cast and I've never gotten to talk to Corvo and Terry at the same time. What has it been like for you to play this couple who is pretty much Hulu's queer icons? Like you are the power <laughs> couple of Hulu. Yeah. What has that been like for you? Has have you gotten fan response from this? Have you Googled these two characters and seen some of the very um interesting things that come out of this fandom oh really oh yeah are you talking like fan yeah. fiction kind of stuff oh yeah fan yeah art. i have okay. been people have tagged me because i'm the one who asks these questions and sometimes they okay it's mm-hmm. been an interesting journey i thought it's been sorry you get no it's okay i send them to mike too yeah. i make him see them it's just yeah, good. This boy. yeah. This, this is your doing yeah um I'm very proud of it. I think uh, we're, we're making a bid to host the GLAAD Awards at some point, I think. Uh, <laughs> maybe as Terry and Corvo. I think that would be great. Yeah. Um, no, I think, you know, extraterrestrial queer representation, uh, you know, isn't talked about enough. And, time. and we're, we're, we're putting it out there. I think it's been neat in the sense that, like, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask for the writers and creators if this was entirely mapped out from day one because my hunch is it kind of wasn't they were a little more sexually ambiguous kind of like they're aliens we don't know they're amorphous and as the seasons have gone on the writers pushed it a little you know tried it out and the fans were like we like that (laughs) and so it kind of was to me it kind of represents a dialogue between the creatives and the fans and everybody was just kind of like challenging each other and now that now these guys are well these and these these beings are married and clearly in love and i think that, that's kind of neat it's kind of a cool creative yeah. process to it all i thought people love it it's really nice to have like a show like this where you have things like family guy and all of that those like adult animation you get to have a space for two queer dads raising this yeah. absolute wild family. Um, My favorite is always, it was when, wasn't it? It was Corvo who got like, who was in Vegas just getting railed by the red goobler. <laughs> yeah, the goobler. My, <laughs> it was so, the cutaway was so intense and the goob was like, ah, ah, ah. It was <laughs> like, holy shit. <laughs> that was always my favorite. The uh, the daddy line from last season really got me. Yeah. The, uh, so with this, uh, was there a, a particular scene or line that like stood out to you as your favorite from this special? Oh, that's a toughie. I have to plead in the fact that my memory is mush and it was recorded so quite some time ago. Yeah. It's okay. Um. I quite like the, the there's a line where uh who's what's who, who's the guy who's like thank the Thanksgiving guy who's giving them who's he claims to be helping them and then they and then puts them all in the cauldron and then they come out and then he's like did you hear any of that I said no I was in a cauldron I don't know why that made me laugh <laughs> but it was um, like no I was in a cauldron um hey Dan. how are you Yo, what's up gate crashers podcast <laughs> 
We're excited <laughs> to be back, crashing those gates. <laughs> all right, thanks. You do my job for me. That's that's all I needed. What kind of candy do you give out at your house? Oh, listen, I answer. I know that answer. Number one, I can answer for Josh. This motherfucker gives out pencils. Okay. Oh, at the I, McMahon- not, I can tell you right now. First of all, when I was a kid, I was allergic to sugar. And my parents told me I was allergic to sugar. I think they lied to me. And they would make me take out a UNICEF can where I would get, I'd have to get pennies and stuff. And I'm a little older than you guys. So doing that shit, that stuff in the late eighties, people would like slam the door on my face. So we give out biggie size candy bars. We give out big out biggie size Reese's biggie size. And my kids are always like, we got to be the family that gives out biggie size stuff. So we're all about big size. We only give out full-sized white chocolate Toblerones. <laughs> and you mean like the ones you buy in the in the airport that are yes, airport? that's right. We give out roughly three million dollars worth of Toblerones, <laughs> and you hand it to the kid, and you go, "Here's your Toblerone, kid." And they're always like, "Whoa, a white chocolate Toblerone!" And you can see them running around the neighborhood telling the other kids, "That's the house that gives out the white chocolate Toblerone," you know, and so. You know, it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a thing we do here at the McMahon household. So a little little industry secret. Kids love the flavorless taste of white chocolate in the form of little triangles. All right. It makes me sick just thinking about eating white chocolate. Oh god, um, that's terrible. You have to dip it in other molten chocolate to want to. Yeah, eat, you know? uh, that's. Oh, you're uh, you're we just terrible. Get big- we just get big bags of the of the Target like ghost shaped peanut butter cups and stuff. Like, yeah, you know, we give it the best. So follow up with that. Uh, best you or ask worst? Us what our favorite sandwich is, dude? I swear to God, you've already asked it. No, I've already gotten you with that. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So with this, this is a sequel to the other special you've done. This one does follow up on a major plot point, which is the Great Pumpkin. Yes. What made you go with the Great Pumpkin? And was there any litigation with the Charlie Brown uh, estate, I guess? Is there an estate for that? Thank you for asking. That would be called the Peanuts Estate. Thank you uh, for a swing and a miss on that one, McMahon. Uh, uh, listen, noted Peanuts hater, so. Wow, okay. That's, yeah. weird. That's like saying you hate air or uh, I just, packing material. What do you do? I want to fight them, all those kids. I don't wanna... there you That's yeah. because you know you have a big head. <laughs> yeah, really... yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I want to fight um, them. Uh, you know, we don't really think of the Great Pumpkin as being owned by the Peanuts because Josh and I aren't really supposed to talk about it, but the Great Pumpkin is real. And Got it. Uh, a lot of people aren't spooky enough to encounter the Great Pumpkin. And a lot of kids are out trick-or-treating when the Great Pumpkin arrives at their house to give them stuff. So he, like, really goes home with a lot of ungifted stuff, you know? Because, like, unlike Christmas... Halloween is a leave the house uh, opportunity, you know? So like the Great Pumpkin isn't moving a lot of stuff, but um, you know, for us, we like any big larger than life character that has the word great before it. And, you know, obviously we all like gourds. So like a great pumpkin is just something that was really attractive to Josh. And I agreed with him on that. Josh, go ahead. Take yeah, I have nothing else to say. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. <laughs> Big gourd guys. All right. So <laughs> this special um, does follow that plot a lot, but there is a subplot, which may be one of my favorites that deals with a witch um, without giving, <laughs> without giving too much obey about what is happening. What, what made you bring this witch into the whole situation? Cause it is a very funny character to bring into yeah. a very sci-fi show. Uh, it's all about, we hit on this thing with the, cause this is a direct sequel, Dan, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? A lot of animated shows don't have the courage to do a direct sequel to an episode they put out four or years stupidity? ago. Are you sure it's courage or stupidity? It's kind of a combination. Yeah. It's like a liquid courage is what they call it. Okay. You know? And, uh, so in the original, the real solar heads, you know, they remember that in the first Halloween special, we made a real meal out of how much Corvo the alien hates spooky stuff. And so does uh, Yumulak. Yumulak thinks that spooky stuff is stupid and uh, Corvo is scared of it. And we all thought that was really funny. And it even like, he's even afraid of candy corn. I think that's great. Like, I don't know, that makes me laugh. 
So then this season, it was like, well, who, who would be in an ally to the Great Pumpkin and who would Corvo find exceedingly scary? And it's like a basic witch <laughs> was, the, <laughs> was the thing we came up with. And then true pupa tattoo having solar heads will tell you that there's a witch that lives in the neighborhood that we reference all the time that the solars visit off screen that we've never met in person named Briga Balba. And they've done stuff like she's, she's traded Yumulak for a PS five. And like, you know, she's been up to some nonsense over the years. And I have a whole pitch about that character as that would be the lead of a spinoff show that I cannot get Hulu to take a bite on. And so this witch is not that witch. This witch is the spirit of Halloween, witch. The one who's associated with uh, classic Halloween stuff. Was that a long enough answer to a simple question? I could I mean, tap on some more details, but it felt right to me. I know I love this this witch has so much background. Josh, anything to add about the witch? Bring a balba, no, not, not bring a balba. No, thank you, sir. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Um, sorry, I'm really lost in all of this witch lore. We've gotten many a holiday special. Are there any holidays that are still out there that you were looking to tackle? And how would you tackle the Flag Day special? Ooh, Flag Day is good. Ooh. What about Rosh Hashanah? Seems pretty apropos. Today? I know I'm working today. That's not great for me. Shana Tova. Is it, you? Um, is it, is it Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm very Irish. That's what the special will be about, is them being like, oh, no, it's Rosh Hashanah. We had a bunch of <laughs> schedule. Doing it. We didn't write a special. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Um <clears throat> I did a uh, I did a, we, we, a a Trek the Vote Kamala Harris fundraiser last night where we were like we have to do this really fast it's Rosh Hashanah we didn't realize I'm like um, we, we have talked money. about honestly we, because they're technically plants we have talked about an Arbor Day special for sure yeah and there's a little in season six a little preview somebody does try to get going a uh, a Fourth of July special but some of the yeah. soldiers aren't into it they just ain't biting. You know, interesting. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you, thank you for all this insight. 